broken. I don't know you are saying. Guess what? I can't talk about you, and you can't talk about me. Yeah. You are talking about me. Guess what? It's coming back. That's yes. right. That's right. So watch out. Amen. Hey, man. Hey. Share the scripture. It says in the last day, that the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, mm -hmm. let him come unto me and drink. All right. Yeah. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, mm -hmm. out of his belly shall flow rivers yes. of living water. Yes, thank God for the Yes, I'm going to give you a couple of dates. November 13th, 2009. Four o'clock in the morning, I was sitting at my table. I'd emptied out a bottle of pills, and I had a glass of water. I had them in my hand, ready to take it. And my 12-year-old daughter came up. God woke her up and sat her at the table. And... I didn't take them. Shortly after that, and it, it, it's awesome to see you said Sister Leslie had come across my path. And see, she came to my store with praise in her eyes. All right. With the love of Jesus. And she brought her pastor down because she knew something was up. And come and shared the word with me. Yes. What you didn't know, though, was I got remarried. Praise God. After three months of marriage, she left. Uh, and it was October 4th through October 6th was the worst days of my life. My blood pressure went up to 255, 135. Wow. My pulse was up in the 130s. Oh my, God. my son begged me to go to the hospital, and all I was doing was begging God to just give me a heart attack and let me go. Oh I had no hope. I had no desire. I did not want to live in this world. I told God I was the one mistake that God made. As I went to the hospital, the doctors come in and the nurses were coming in. They had IVs inside my arms for blood pressure medicine. My blood pressure was not going down. I could see in the eyes of all these people coming to the room, they did not understand why something didn't happen. Praise God. On October 6th, they had given me a, a, a nuclear test and uh, they shot some dye in me and they, they ran a, a thing through the artery in my leg. They told me that the risk was death. Mm. And I said, yes, let's do it. Mm. So they took me up there and as I was laying there, I just looked in the, in, up in the air and I was like, God, just let it be over. Mm. I have nothing else to give. Wow. Everything is gone. I, have, I don't want to be here no more. Mm. The procedure was done and that night I was sent home and they told me to stay out of bath water because of the plug in my leg. Mm. The first thing I did when I got home mm. was I got in the bath. Oh, right. For three hours I was in the bathtub asking God for that thing to bust. Mm. See if it would have bust. I'd have bled to death. Oh. I went for another four or five weeks of some crazy living. <laughs> but you know what happened? It was the praise of people that knew me, that kept sowing into me, that kept praying for me to say, you're worth something. That's right. Yes. 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 And I don't believe And I was in a bar. I was in the bar and I got a phone call from a dear sweet lady and she goes, Bill, Bill, what are you doing? You know God loves you. I go, No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't, because if he did, none of
none of this stuff would have happened. But you know who that was? That was the enemy. The enemy knew that I had a voice to deliver a message That's from right. God's Word. And he stepped on me, and he stepped on me, and he stepped on me, and he used people close to me to try to take me out. And one night, it was a Sunday morning, we went to church, or I went to church, and I knew I had to do something because I was going crazy. Hmm. Brother Robert, uh, uh, the Sunday school teacher at the time, had preached about uh, when Jesus turned the, the wine, in, or the water into new wine. And he said that sometimes we need to take our battered and broken heart yes. and take it to Jesus for a new heart. Amen. The praise and worship songs that came up was talking about if I never had a trial, I would never know that you were real. Amen. Amen. Our pastor at that time, he told us to go to a scripture and I dropped below it, and below it, it was talking, and I don't even remember where it's at now, but it was talking about somebody that had stepped back from ministry, and that God was calling them back. That night, though, was when the miracle happened. When I went to church, it, I got there at four because I knew that if I didn't go then, I would never step foot back. So Sunday night at, at uh, Four o'clock, I drove to the church. I sat in the parking lot. Hmm. And they gave a testimony time. And I told them all of this that I had said. And I said, tonight I am not leaving until God gives me a new heart. Amen. 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 So, right before Thanksgiving last year, I went up to the front at the end of the service. And I stayed there. And the instruction to me was this. You need to start calling out what's been attacking you. Oh, you need to put it down. And so I started to, but then I started praising God because I knew what God had done. And see, what he did was he literally reached inside of my chest. He pulled out the broken heart. He threw it away. He took and replaced my heart with a new one. And so as time has grown, my prayer has been, Lord, let my light so shine that when I go and talk to other people, that they will see the glory of you. It's not about me. See, I was on Lord by my own choice because that's where I wanted to go. But God loved me so much, He said, I'm not going to honor you. But the saints that were around me during the time that I was wishing I was dead had put up many prayers to God to spare Amen. my life. Amen. I am here today because of that. Amen. And you know what? There is no, nothing else in this world that is worth anything Amen. but God. Amen. We, we, what you don't understand is that, it, it, it's, and I don't remember who said it now, with the lips closed, how do you know your fruit? Yeah. You gotta open your mouth yeah. so that the fruit can come forth yeah. so that somebody yeah. that is wishing to be dead can yeah. come alive. Yeah. Because how do they know that there's a real God yeah. unless you begin to speak it and praise it? Yeah. They have no clue other than what we have inside of us. We have to share it. Yeah. If we don't share it, we're sending people straight to hell. Praise to a living God. How do they give praise to a living 
God. Amen. We are their teachers. Yes. Amen. How do they learn? Amen. We have to be the example. Amen. How does this young lady learn how to be a wife? Yes. And a mother? Yes. It comes from the teachings yes. of the older generation yes. of stepping out of a comfort zone oh. and saying, Lord, use me. Yes. Amen. Yeah. She needs a mentor. Uh, yeah. These young men over here need a mentor. Somebody's got to step up. Yeah. 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 And it comes to praise. If we praise God with a genuine heart, they will know the truth. Yeah. Yeah. They will follow the truth. Yeah. 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 Yeah.